Good evening, everybody. It's about time to start. Let's see, that's about right. There's a couple of people that are on their way in. So it's good to be here this evening. And um, so as we continue with our Mission Sunday, and uh, we just, we're going to have three speakers tonight. So uh, we'll have a song, which we're going to be singing uh, song 141, Anywhere with Jesus. So if you want to get the songbooks out and turn to Anywhere with Jesus, uh, hymn number one, or 414, sorry, so 414. And then after that, uh, Steve is going to present his information on Mexico and Cuba. And then after that, we're going to have um, Jeff, Jeff present on Geyer Springs. And then at the end, uh, Chad is going to present on the Gospel Chariots. So um, with that, why don't we start with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the blessings you provided us at this congregation. We're so grateful for the kingdom that you've set up for us and we're so hopeful and, and look forward to that time when we can be with you. We know that uh, you have loved humanity over the, the centuries and, and the millennia and you've put up with us and we are so grateful for the love that you've shown us, especially the love that you provided through your son and the sacrifice he made for us. We know that there's no way to ever earn that love, that it's, it's freely given by you, and we are so thankful and joyous uh, that you've provided us this, uh, this avenue that we can uh, commune with Jesus, and, uh, and we're just thankful for that. We ask that those things that we find in the scriptures of, of how your kingdom should be run here on earth are done, that, uh, that we can spread your gospel to others, and that uh, we can show the love that you've shown us to others. We're thankful for the avenue of prayer that we have, that we can lift up those concerns, those things. Sometimes it's difficult for us in this life, and there's certainly concerns and, and hang-ups that we have, and, and we can rely on, on our prayer to you and, and your answering with the scriptures and the knowledge and the brethren and uh, that, uh, that can help us through the difficult times. Forgive us of our sins and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So um, why don't we sing uh, the first and the last stanza of Anywhere with Jesus. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go, anywhere he leads me in this world below. Anywhere without the nearest joys of the day, anywhere with Jesus I can Hi, everybody. Welcome to Missions Week. Uh, this is one of the great things I love about this congregation. Um, before we ever started coming to church here, we showed up on a Missions Week Sunday, and I, I never looked back because uh, it's amazing what this church does. It's amazing what the missions committee does. Gabrielle and I have been so fortunate the last six or seven years, I don't know how long, to be part of the missions committee. Um, this is a committee that really, really tries to seek out help that fits in with our mission statement and tries to help and go above and beyond. Very proud to work with all these people, many who have 
come and gone and the ones that are there right now. God blessed us very much when Barry and Linda walked in the door because Barry's done an amazing job and we sure are glad that he's our leader. Uh, working with Jerry all those years, um, he was just a wonderful, wonderful gentleman who worked very, very hard and we learned so much from him and we were so grateful to get to work with him. And of course we started with Clem when Clem was here. He made us, I mean, he gave us an opportunity to be on the missions committee. And so uh, we just uh, really appreciate our time on the missions committee. Um, when we made a decision to follow the work and to work full time down at Bearden, we felt that the right thing to do was to step away from our duties here to, because we knew we couldn't, uh, you know, uh, give, the, give a full hearted effort with uh, going back and forth each week. And so uh, I really appreciate Barry uh, letting me speak tonight because y'all know that the Mexico work with Bruno is really, really special to me. And I'm very excited to be talking about the Cuba work, uh, which is one of those where the missions committee said, where can we uh, really, really help? And they found a place in Cuba. This is it up here. They found a place in Cuba that uh, has three churches where, uh, but first let me talk to you about Cuba just a minute. You see it's 342 miles away from the coast of Florida. The amazing thing is, let me see here. Well, look how beautiful Cuba is. I want to talk about that a little bit later, but I want to get beautiful country. I want to get to this map right here because we're 342 miles from Cuba to the coast of Florida, and yet look where Havana is. I hope that you can see it. I wonder if we could turn out maybe a light or two. Um, but anyway, Havana is up there, uh, up there where it says Cuba, and then where we're going to be focused on are these three communities down here. Um, now, what's funny is that these three communities are further away from Cuba than Havana than Havana is from Florida. So it's over 400 miles, but it's like about a nine-hour nine hour car trip. Uh, these three places are called Higani, Mijehueco, and Tassajeras, and they're in Grandma Province. And I'm not gonna say a joke about that. Okay, but uh, there's a gentleman who's been, who's been uh, working there for the last 20 years. You'll be hearing his name a lot as he's quite a worker. His name is Ramey Gonzalez Perez. And let me show you Ramey. That's Ramey baptizing a young lady. Like I said, he's been working there, uh, being the minister um, and, uh, and a leader in these three churches now for over 20 years. And we feel very fortunate to have found such a hard worker that we know that will continue to work hard. We're just trying to find ways to help support him. Um, this next one, here he is. He's getting ready to go visit the church in Mijehueco. And his best mode of transportation to get there is by motorcycle, as you can see. Now, to get to Tasejeras, and y'all, if y'all speak Spanish, please forgive my pronunciation, is by, is by this mode of transportation. And uh, he says this is more practical and safer for him to go and uh, he's got that cart with him on this trip too. Okay. Now, they've been very, very blessed to, and fortunate to be able to rent some land from the government. They rent this land and they grow crops on it. This is a tremendous, they tell us how important this is to help feed not only congregations, but they can also help in the community and uh, this has been a, a great blessing to them. They still remain very excited about this. This did not happen until after we got to know um, this work. Now, it looks like Ramey's cleared that whole field by himself, but he really didn't. This was just such a good picture of him, I wanted to put it in there, but, but the rest of the church, they were out there helping him too. But I thought, that guy looks like somebody I'd want on my team if I showed that picture. Um, getting back to the to the to the vegetables that they grow there, this is uh, 
these are some of them. This is his wife. This is Rosa. And, um, oh, I'm sorry, I went the wrong way. And here are some women, and Rosa is leading this uh, a women's group in front of the field. But, you know, I, sometimes I can't help myself, so I'm going to say something. Um, but a few years ago, we, we met a couple at one of the Spanish-speaking churches in Little Rock, and they had come from Cuba. And, uh, you know, when you meet somebody from Cuba, you, you want to know what the living conditions are like, right? And so we would ask them what it was like, because I, um, I think they were both doctors. I think they were both doctors, and they, and they were telling us, you know, that they made about the same amount as anybody on the street. They didn't make any extra money being doctors. But they had escaped Cuba and found their way here. And I was saying, you know, do they give y'all enough to eat? And he said, well, for an adult, uh, two eggs a week. For an adult, two eggs a week. Now, if you go up here to the IHOP, they use about six or seven eggs in one omelet. Okay? So for me, that would be rough to get two eggs a week. Okay. I had to get that off my chest. Okay, this is one of the one of the congregations. Um, I want to let you know that um, that in the three congregations, uh, the attendance at Mihueco is 54 right now. Higani is 21. Tasajeras is 28. So Ramy continues to work that area and help all, with all three of those congregations. Uh, this next, this next uh, photo, the, they are specifically pray, praying to have relief from the pandemic. Uh, both, both, both works in Cuba and Mexico have been hurt um, severely by the pandemic, and it affects you know, everything around them. And so they specifically uh, pray for relief from that pandemic that it'll soon be over. The pandemic is, is the main reason we are struggling to get money and support to help them. And so we need for this whole thing to clear up and make that easier for us. Right now we're able to pay their telephone bill. I'm talking about uh, in Cuba, the work there, which is very expensive for them. It's very, very expensive. And so that's one a small thing for us, but something that we can help them with that helps them a great deal, that we can just um, take that over for them for right now. Now this is Anyet. Anyet is Ramy's daughter. Anyet has been the lifeline between us and that work. She's been invaluable with her uh, information to us. She's very, very good with reporting to us. Um, that's mom, um, Rosa, and then that young man, his name is Carlos Bautista, and Carlos has been Ramey's right-hand man for a few years now, and, and yet, and Carlos recently were married, and here's a, a picture of the wedding with the family in the church. Now... The little baby on the left is Anyet, okay? Now that little baby's name is Carlos Josue. Now this is Anyet's sister, uh, Alian, and her baby's name, this baby, they were born about the same time, and this baby's name is Jairo. So there's a couple of grandbabies for Ramy. Um, now I wanna talk about the work in Mexico. But before, before I leave Cuba, I, I want to say uh, something about how difficult uh, life is outside of the United States and how Ramy and Bruno, um, it's a hard life. It's a hard life, really. And uh, there's so many things that we just take for granted. But these seem, I know Bruno, I've known Bruno since about 2001. And so I know Bruno's a tough guy. And from looking at these photos, looks to me like Ramey's a tough guy too. And I think it takes a tough guy to do what these men are doing. 
Right now, they're struggling with the pandemic. They're struggling with keeping their heads above water for their congregation. Um, something that we don't talk about, and I don't know, maybe we should have a, a lesson about it at some point, but the dangers are real that they face. If you can imagine being in a country where the government doesn't care about you and, they, and uh, there's corruption from top to bottom and there's no way out, now, we never had to think about that, have we, before? And now it's kind of creeping in a little bit into where we live a little bit. But they deal with it every day. And it's a situation where if you look at the, a person, you know, if you catch their eye, that could change your life in a heartbeat if it's the wrong person. And uh, it's a dangerous situation that they're in in many, many cases. We know some situations that I won't go into tonight. But I just want y'all to not forget uh, the physical dangers that uh, are in these other countries. Okay, this is Quetzalcoatlcos. This is where Bruno Zapata and his wife, Teresa, have been for, oh, I guess we've been helping them about 15 years. I didn't look that up, but I know Bruno was here on the 10th year, and that seems about four or five years ago. And uh, like I say, Gabriella and I worked on the ground with Bruno and Teresa uh, for three years. And y'all could, could interview all over this country to find somebody to do that work down there. And you won't find a better man, a better brother than Bruno Zapata. And you know how they always put Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, in all these, all these movies? Well, if I was in a situation where my family crashed in the Amazon River and they were surrounded by piranha and crocodiles and cannibals on this side and drug cartels on this side, I wouldn't call Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I'd call Bruno Zapata because I know he would take care of it. He would get my family out of there. That's how I feel about him. That's this guy right here. Oh, let me talk to you a little bit about Quetzalcoatlcos. This is beautiful. It's on the coast. Uh, there's an ocean right there. You would think it's paradise. It's got a river that runs right through it over on this side, on the other side over there. Uh, they've also got a seafood buffet, and they've also got a Walmart. So it seems like paradise, right? But uh, it's not paradise. Uh, I remember one morning when we woke up, it had rained in the night, and I said, Bruno, I'm gonna run out to the street and take some, some video of the street, street action. And he said, well, it rained last night. And I said, so? And he said, well, when you go out there, you might smell a familiar odor. And so I went out there and you could smell raw sewage. And so after rain, the sewage comes up. And he said, whatever you do, don't stand close to the road because you get splattered, okay? Also, uh, at one point we said, hey, could we run down to the ocean, maybe jump into the ocean? Because it's right there. And he said, well, don't go without us because we, we want you to know where it's safe to get in where you won't have to deal with the open sewage that's going out into the ocean. And we said, okay. And you couple that with the, uh, the mafia. The, you know, we call them drug cartels here. The, they call them mafia down there. And it's just... Uh, even though they've got those great things going, Satan is, is alive and well, and he's trying his best to halt things up there. But uh, anyway, uh, with the pandemic, they had some time to work on the, the church, so they gave it a new coat of paint. Uh, the signs are, are pretty and new, and they uh, waterproofed the roof. There's, there's my guy Bruno and his wife Teresa, and that's um, Karen on her quinceanera. And that's a big deal when a girl turns 15 in that culture. And um, so they were really proud and, and had a great, great day with Karen. And uh, Therese is a wonderful, wonderful help to Bruno. And Karen, she was raised in the church there and has done like so many of our young ladies here and uh, just worked hard through the uh, growing up helping in the church. Um, here's a picture of the church. Um, like I say, the pandemic in this work and in Cuba, they keep having to shut the church down, open the church up, um, and they can't get it. Uh, 
they can't do like what we're doing yet. So hopefully, you know, hopefully uh, the Lord will, will fix all that. But the last, the last uh, slide I want to show you is a slide of some of the women. And the reason I'm showing it to you because this woman on the right, that's Ophelia. And she's the one that this church helped out. She didn't have any insurance and she needed surgery. And so she's, she's doing great after her surgery and is really appreciative and thanks this church very, very much for helping her out. But that's Paola and then Ophelia's uh, daughter, Betty. And uh, I've met this lady in the middle, but I can't recall her name and I don't know that other lady, but that's Ophelia on the right. So anyway, just, just pray that, that uh, both these works continue and feel really, really good, please, about both the works. Um, because I, I sure am proud. I sure am proud to be, to have been a part of all this that's been going on, and I'm proud of this church for for sponsoring these two men. Good evening, how are you guys? Um, I'm gonna set my timer, which is what I do every time I speak at Geyer Springs, so I don't talk too much. Um, so you know, if uh, any of you had the opportunity to get up here and talk about your family and show pictures of your family, you could probably fill up a lot of time because we all have our family, right? So um, most of you guys realize that Geyer Springs for Katie and I and our three children it is uh, has become like our family, so it would be easy for me to fill up a lot of time, but I'll, I'll try to watch my time. Um, I want to speak this evening uh, to you a little bit about the work in Geyer Springs and Little Rock, and before I do that, I want to read a verse from Romans chapter 16 and verse 16, which is um, a verse that you see a lot of time all throughout Latin America. When you get to a church, a lot of times they have this verse um, painted over the front door or somewhere in the entry, and it says the following, uh, this is Romans 16, verse 16. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ send their greetings. And so we just want to, on behalf of the Iglesia de Cristo, uh, they send their love, they send their greetings. And Octavio and Teresa were planning on being here this evening, but they also had an, another Bible study at 7 o'clock, and they're, they're trying so hard to do evangelism. And so, you know, he told me that, and I was like, of course, everybody understands um, you can't be in two places at one time. So he did want to be here this evening and see you face to face, but uh, they had that commitment to do that. Um, when I think about this verse that I just mentioned from Romans uh, chapter 16, um, I did a lesson on it a little while ago, about a, a week or two ago. And if you were to read that, you would see the names of so many people that really we only see their names in that one chapter in the Bible. So I think of names like... Um, Epinetus, Andronicus, Junius. I'm having to read from the list because I don't know the names. We don't hear about them very often. But if you go back and you read that chapter in Romans chapter 16, you think to yourself, why did Paul even think it was this important to mention these people's names? We don't hear anything about them anywhere else in the Bible. And when you stop and you look at it and you really think about what's the common thread with all of these people that are mentioned, he continues to use the same phrase and he says, so-and-so works hard for the kingdom of God. So-and-so has worked so hard for the Lord. So-and-so has worked so hard. And so as we talk about Missions Week and as we think about Bruno and we think about Raime and we think about all the other men and women that we have out there on the field, we think about the Borba family who we heard from this Sunday morning. Uh, one of the most encouraging uh, things for us during Missions Week is to stop and think about all these men and women who are working so hard for the kingdom of God, both close to home and far away. And so I know that's encouraging to, to us during Missions Week, and I hope that's encouraging to you as you hear about all these different works. Um, so I want to take a few moments and just share with you a little bit about the good things that are going on in Geyer Springs. 
Um, of course, like has already been mentioned, COVID has taken a hit on congregations in many different ways, and it has been a little difficult at Geyer Springs because just like a lot of other churches, there's been times when we have to meet virtually or there's been times when we're there and everybody is masked up and that changes the dynamic, and then things are slowly but surely getting back to normal a little bit now, but of course, uh, our attendance has been all over the place as has been pretty much everywhere. Um, so that has been a little bit of a challenge. Um, but um, some of the good things that I want to mention to you, let's see, go ahead. Okay. Um, some of the good things that I want, minute, want to mention to you is we have had four uh, baptisms throughout this year, even despite everything that's been going on. Um, two of the baptisms were two young people named Anjali and Justin and their brothers and sister, well, brother and sister. Um, so they're part of our youth group. Uh, they're very young, but um, they, they were baptized and we're thankful for them. And uh, two other people that were baptized, you're going to see their picture here in just a minute. Well, you, actually, you can see the the um, man there who's getting the food, he's our third Gustavo. We have three Gustavos at Geyer Springs now. We're a pretty small church. So we have Gustavo the dad, and then we have Gustavo the baby, uh, and then we have Octavio's son, who's also Gustavo. So we have three Gustavos. But anyway, Gustavo was one of the uh, men who got baptized, and, and his wife, Lauren, was also baptized. So that, that's our, our four people who were baptized. And we just want to ask that you would be in prayer for them. You guys know that when people are new Christians, especially uh, Satan attacks in many different ways. And, and we've seen that in their life. But we've also seen that the uh, Lord is faithful, God is good, and he, he blesses them and he's growing them spiritually. Um, so I want to mention a couple of things. I want to show you a couple of pictures, and I know my time is limited. Um, so a couple of important things that I'm just going to kind of flip through. Well, I, I guess I can go backwards. Yeah, I can. Okay. Um, so actually, uh, one of the things that we got to do this summer, um, we want to say thank you to the church here at the village because we were able to use the church van to go to the family encampment in Red River. And Katie and I were able to take our kids with uh, Teresa and their three kids and my sister and two of her kids. And uh, that was a very, very good, spiritually encouraging time for us. And one of the best things that came out of that was, I don't, some of you have probably been there, uh, but they have a time when uh, young men from the church come up and preach for like five minutes. And so when our little boys saw the other young men doing that, my nephew, who is Leilani's age, was like, hey, I want to do that. And we were like, what? You know, we never even thought that he was interested in that. And then um, Malachi uh, has been able to do a short uh, devotional thought as well as Gustavo and Justin. And so our young men saw, okay, if these kids can get up and speak in front of, you know, a thousand plus people, well, we can get up and speak in front of, you know, 30 plus people. And so that was a really great blessing. And all of our children during that uh, visit to, to Red River, we, we did a whole project on the promises of God. And so at the end of that trip, we, we had little notebooks and we all talked about what is the most important promise you learned about. So I wanted to say thank you for the Village Church's involvement in making that trip possible. That was important for us this summer. Um, go back here. So I'm just kind of skipping all around. Uh, okay, let me go back to, that's what I wanted you guys to see. Um, I, I didn't take that many pictures of the Four Fields camp this summer. And I wish I would have taken some more, but this is one of them. And these are some of our young ladies from the, the church at Geyer Springs. And for those of you that don't know, uh, we also had some of the youth group from here at the Village Church that also attended the same camp. And that camp was amazing. Um, we had Spanish-speaking congregations as well as English-speaking congregations from both Arkansas and Missouri. And we didn't really know what to expect when we went to this. This is the evangelism uh, tool that uh, Mike Napier and uh, Fernando Toledo from Benton, Arkansas, and lots of other uh, brothers and sisters are involved in right now training people how to share the gospel. So when we got there, a lot of our teenagers from the Spanish churches had never spent the night away from home, not once because it's not a cultural thing that people, you know, spend the night at each other's house. So we were like, how is this going to go? And at first it was kind of awkward and stuff, but after being there, of course, the kids started getting to know each other. They loved it. And, um, you know, I'll 
talk about Malachi a little bit. He said it was his favorite camp, and he got to go to several this year, several good ones. But what he said he liked about it was, I think, something that all of our youth really liked, and that was the fact that they were learning things, and then they were asked to get up and present to the group and say, okay, you just learned this tool. Like, you, you just learned how to think about a relational map and think about all the people in your life who you could maybe share the gospel with. You get up and tell us how to use that tool, and they did it. And our, our young men did it, our young ladies came up and also talked about how to use those tools. And so I just want to encourage you, if you don't know anything about the four fields, um, talk to me about it, talk to Mike about it, talk to Chad about it, or anybody else, talk to our, our young ones who went, because I think that you're going to be hearing a lot more about it in the near future, because it's something that lots and lots of churches all over are doing, both in the United States and uh, on the mission field because it's something that allows any person, you don't have to be a trained preacher, anybody who is a Christian can take these tools and share the gospel. And young people can do it as well. And so that was probably one of the highlights of our year um, for, for um, both the youth from the Village Church and the Geyer Springs Church who went and did that. Um, so yeah. <laughs> you know, less, oh, uh, and so another thing I was going to mention, uh, one of our, our uh, main focuses at Geyer Springs this year because we have been limited in what we can do uh, evangelism wise just because of COVID and everything. We've really tried to, to focus on our youth because they're getting older and we know that our time with them is limited and we want to give them a very solid foundation. So that's why it was so important for us to take them to this camp. Uh, we also had some of the, the kids from the youth group at Geyer Springs attend Wildwood with, of course, our kids from the Village Church and kids from all over uh, the area. So there have been opportunities when the youth group from here and the youth group from Geyer Springs have got to do things together and we're thankful to Chad and to other people here at this church who make that happen. And I know that's a huge blessing for the Geyer Springs Church. Um, so we're, we're thankful for that. Um, that's my timer. So I gave myself 10 minutes to talk, and now I just want to show you a few pictures. Um, so let's see. Go back to the beginning. Okay, so I know that you guys already know this, but um, we love to eat at our <laughs> Geyer Springs which many of the churches do. This was just last week. We, we cooked tacos. Um, it was amazing. Uh, if you guys ever want to come over on a Sunday when we're having potluck, they will be so happy. They will embrace you with open arms. It doesn't matter if you know any Spanish at all. They'll love you. Um, the, you'll eat very, very well. And this is our time just to be together as a church family. Um, so that's, uh, that was last Sunday, actually. And those are different uh, church members there eating their tacos. This is Octavio, who's the minister of the church there, and he's cooking. He has, I don't know what you call that in English. We call it like a plancha in Spanish, but it's, it's a big grill. So um, they've been using that a lot for these potlucks and stuff. Usually it's at their house, but he brought it to church last Sunday. Um, but those times are really important for us, not just to eat, of course, but to spend time together. This was at the Four Fields camp, so there you can see the kids are, are playing, but I already talked about that a little bit, so I'm going to move past it. Um, we've also, uh, and really this has been more Octavio and Teresa organizing this, but every other Friday night we try to do something for the teenagers where they can just get together and we were just doing silly games there that I think they had to like blow a ping pong ball across these uh, cups of water, which sounds kind of easy but it was hard and then like I think we smushed their faces in whipped cream and just silly stuff. But the main idea is just to get the teenagers together and give them something positive to do. Um, and really, Teresa and Octavio have been working really hard to do that. We uh, can't always make it because it's in Little Rock, but we try real hard to go there. And so you can see several of the kids are there. Um, there's four fields. Okay. This was, I think, quite a while ago because I think this was last winter. But um, I, I chose this picture because I know you know our kids, and I know uh, most of you know Teresa and Octavio's kids at this point. You can see all of our children have grown a lot. Gustavo is about to overtake me height-wise, I think. Um, but the, the young man that's in the uh, far left corner, you may not have seen him. He's actually been to the Village Church a couple of times for a few of our activities. His name is Justin, and he's one of the young men that was recently baptized. So that's why I chose that picture. But then there's all of our kids there too. Um, this was from Mother's Day. And so, uh, of course, they always really like to do special things. Family is very important in our congregation. And so that day we had a special thing for Mother's Day. And, and these are two of our young ladies from the youth group. This is uh, Maite and Mia, and then their mother, Maria. And 
I think they're saying something nice to their mom there. So just wanted to clue that. And this is also from Mother's Day. And this is actually Octavio's the minister in the pink shirt. And that's his wife, Teresa, in the blue dress. And then Octavio's mom is there in, in like the dark red sweater. And so he's saying something nice to his mom on that day. This is the young couple who uh, were baptized very recently, and we actually, um, we were doing a, um, a baby shower for them that day. Uh, they have their hands full. They have three kids. They're all under the age of three, so. <laughs> and, but they're, they're wonderful kids. We all love them very much, and like I say, we're all family, so when we're together, um, we all try to help, you know, take care of each other's kids and try to give Gustavo and Lauren a chance to hear the Bible class and the sermon, because sometimes that's hard with three kids under the age of three, but they're doing good. Uh, just keep them in your prayers. Um, they're young, and they're trying to do the best they can with their three babies, so. Okay, um, so I think I want to sum up and just tell you, uh, we thank you so much for your continued support of the work in Geyer Springs. Um, I just want to encourage you guys to constantly be in prayer for this work. Um, sometimes when you're working with a small church and the attendance is going up and down like this and stuff, it's easy to maybe to get a little bit discouraged and you can lose sight of the big picture. But the big picture is that we are making a difference there. We are working with families. We're working with uh, children. We're working with young people. And I know that God is going to bless those efforts. And we may not always see those efforts in the immediate moment, in the present, but we know that God will bless those efforts. And I want to encourage you to be praying for three specific things, to be praying for the new Christians, actually more than three, sorry. Um, I want to encourage you to be praying for the new Christians, for our youth, and for the, visitor, for the visitors that come, that we would be able to kind of maintain those contacts. I want you to please be praying for our efforts as we try to reach out to new people in the community and uh, that God would send more workers to the harvest field because we just need more workers. It's hard. Um, uh, Octavio works a regular construction job. He works six days a week, and so what he does is what he can do. Same thing for our family, and it's really the same thing for all the families at Geyer Springs. We're, we're trying to do the best that we can, and we just ask that the Lord would bless our efforts, and um, we know that he will. Thank you, guys. Hasn't it been encouraging to hear about those works, to see those Christians in other places that uh, we can't be with, but we love because of Jesus, right? And I think Steve and Jeff have done a great job this evening uh, sharing with us and helping us get excited about what's going on around the world and um, the love and the, and the true dedication to Jesus that some of these servants have. And it's just a blessing to learn about them. And I know that you know my dad wishes he could be here tonight. And uh, I went over there and visited them and uh, this afternoon, Janet and Bailey and I, and, and he's doing well. And, and, um, but I'm going to try to do my best to tell you a little bit about the Gospel Chariot ministry tonight, which I'm excited about and which I really... Uh, like uh, like our other works that we've been talking about this evening, uh, I, I I get so excited about them as well, and and I hope you will too. A few things about uh, the Gospel Chariot Ministries in Africa. A few things that uh, that they believe and that we think are a part of uh, what is going on there, and is so important. And you know that some of our congregation, even some of our youth, have been over to Africa. And been a part and seen some of been able to see some of these things, but some thing real important things that we believe are that the gospel is powerful. It's where the power is, right? And Paul said in the book of Romans, "I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the what, the power of God." Yes, and um, and uh, what is going to win the lost around the world is uh, accomplished through God and His power and His gospel. And that's why it's so important to share and to be sowing the seed in all the ways we've been seeing this evening. 
Um, another important factor with uh, Gospel Chariot Ministries is they believe that we'll have great success with nationals teaching nationals, kind of like with Africans teaching Africans and with in, people in India teaching other people in India. And when we train up and encourage and strengthen those folks, uh, they already know the language, they already know the customs, and they, are, they can be very effective. And uh, now Gospel Chariot is seeing people go from their area to other areas and neighboring countries and having great success. And if we're ever going to win, oh, we think about all these billions and billions, uh, you know, billions, millions and billions of people that need to hear the gospel, right? In India, in Africa, you and I well know that we can't hire enough preachers to send everywhere we need to send, right? And so uh, we, we can't uh, send enough things. Um, we, we can't have enough mission trips. We can't hire enough preachers, whatever it is. Um, what is going to have to happen to evangelize the world is, is what we see in 2 Timothy uh, verses 1 and 2. And I want to read those to you. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many. I've got a new Bible. There you go, and the pages are still sticking. Um, and he says, In the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. And um, the, the idea with Gospel Chariot is the only way we're going to be able to evangelize our nation and our world is if you teach me and I teach somebody else and that person teaches somebody else and they share what they have heard. Isn't that the way the early church evangelized the world? You know, they, they only had 12 apostles and they only had so many uh, missionaries that they could send. But they began to learn and uh, some of the discipleship that uh, Jeff and, and Steve have, have shown us and we heard about this morning. That's the, that's the only way we're really going to spread the message all over the world is if, if we start training the church to I'm going to share it with you and you're going to share it with somebody else, right? And that's a real key component. Uh, in Africa. And so you can see the great size of the continent of Africa, and you can also uh, realize that Gospel Chariot has, has really been spreading to other parts of the world as well. But I want to show you some of that. Um, and some of you, there may be someone here who doesn't know about the Gospel Chariots, and uh, in a physical way, uh, they build gospel chariots and, and uh, also a great, in a great spiritual sense, we have that gospel chariot rolling along and spreading the gospel. But they build these custom trucks that can go into rough places all over Africa. Uh, the roads are not like our roads. Brother Don Collins used to talk about that. Uh, and, uh, but uh, they, they custom build these trucks that can go just all over the place and all over the continent. And um, inside of them, they'll have a sleeping quarters for the workers. They'll have a, a stage that folds out. They will have, <clears throat> uh, you know, even thoughtful things. Of You see that front bumper? That front bumper is full of water and the sun is heating it all day. And uh, they, have, they just have found practical ways to, um, to help uh, the workers and the, those who are serving and taking turns going all over the continent to preach the gospel. And so they have built these red gospel chariots of many sizes. And in a few cases, they'll go into a country where red is the opposition party color and they better not go in in red. But... Uh, but they do so, and uh, out, out of the side of the stage, you know, uh, it'll open up, and there'll be, uh, of the truck, and there'll be a stage where they can speak, and there is a baptistry inside. I'll show you in just a little bit. And they open up these uh, large tents, 
you can see uh, brothers and sisters in Christ worshiping and you see a, a brother passing communion here and and uh, we we see uh, just the great response when this shows up into town and uh, at first thought you might think yeah what a great you know come into town and have a great big deal and then and then leave but gospel chariot spends a lot of its time in follow up and uh, even uh, World Bible School and other organizations like that love Gospel Chariot because uh, they travel all over the continent and do follow up for a gospel for for uh, World Bible School students for for places and and when there is a church that is struggling or or needing leadership built or well they can pull in there and stay for a period of time and really strengthen and do follow up and help encourage that church and Gospel Chariot uh, has. Uh, planted congregations all over the continent and I want you to know that uh, a large a big portion of those are self-supporting congregations they don't spend a lot of time um, hiring uh, preachers they go from that idea of we're going to tell you and you teach your neighbor and you tell your and uh, and uh, they develop and they become each one of them becomes an evangelist and uh, it, which is that's the goal, and so you can see sometimes when the weather's real nice, they'll just pull up and have open air preaching, and much of the town will show up and listen to the gospel being preached. I've got to go around with the chariot a few times, and it is just, and I, I've even got to speak a few times, and uh, and places where English is spoken, or they can have a translator, and and it is just amazing to see the eagerness of people to hear that a group is coming in and they're going to teach and, and provide this type of instruction and give out Bibles and uh, they're not selling stuff and they're not you know, trying to take advantage of the people which happens all over it. Commonly, uh, you would be surprised how much of that uh, goes on. And uh, when they come in and they are just a blessing and do simple Bible teaching and uh, discipleship learning, um, it comes with great effect. I'll uh, show you some of the gospel chariots. This is the Ghana gospel chariot. And uh, we're familiar with uh, a lot of good things in Ghana. And they've traveled around and helped there. And they also have uh, gone to a lot of different areas right around them. A Nigeria truck. Um, here you can see Gospel Chariot World Bible School. They'll drive around and people... When I was on one of the Gospel Chariot vehicles, it said on the side of it, World Bible School. And as we would uh, go through different cities, people would run by the vehicle and flag us down and say, hey, I'm one of the students. I'm one of the students. And uh, it's, just, it's just a wonderful... Uh, way also during the pandemic and some of the difficulties uh, before they had to shut down the trucks and the trucks are back on the road now but uh, uh, they'd also can have gone and done a lot of humanitarian effort through the, through those uh, opportunities here you can see a whole lot of people who have gotten their world bible school bible and we have a uh, they have a great bible there that they have printed uh, I believe those are in the English Standard Version. And, uh, and in the back, it is full of all kinds of Bible study helps and guides. And, and uh, uh, after, after uh, uh, they have read the Scriptures, they can look back there and see uh, all of the different topical and, and uh, helps that, that are given. And it's a wonderful Bible. And I can tell you, uh, the first time I was in Namibia, we pulled a trailer up full of those Bibles. And I remember handing out Bibles, uh, several to whom it was their first Bible. And tears uh, coming down their face. Uh, almost knocking me down as we're opening the door and trying to hand them out. Um, just, uh, oh, we don't know the gift we hold in our hands when we hold our Bible. And a lot of these folks um, view it as that. And, and what a wonderful thought and lesson for us. Sixteen chariots are now rolling all over the continent of Africa. Going around, setting up and going to places where 
Uh, they have not been going to places to follow up, going to a place where a congregation was started a year ago and going in to teach and to train and to strengthen. And uh, I'm so excited about all that follow-up going on. And there's a 17th coming soon. Um, and I, I know that it is being built right now. And uh, that is so exciting. That's just been able to happen, just been accomplished. New chariot being built for West Africa. And it will launch out of Benin and go to other French-speaking countries now. And uh, it, is, it is being built right now and getting ready to get on the road and to roll. And that, that's going to be so exciting uh, to see. <clears throat> you can see uh, a lot of um, Christians gathered under the trees and, uh, and uh, studying. A lot of times that will be the setting. Uh, I, my first trip to Africa, there had just been a, a church service under a tree and there was a black mamba crawling in the branches. And one of the members pulled a slingshot out of his pocket and one shot shot that snake out of the tree and they went right on with class. And, uh, and so, um, what a, uh, but what a great group of uh, Christians in every place that you go and you see their, their love and their eagerness for the gospel. See more places, more. This is kind of what it's like uh, being under that tent. And you, you'll get up on the platform there, and there'll be a little stand, and they've got some speakers and a, a sound system. Every truck has a generator on it, and uh, you're able to hear well. You're able to um, to hear good preaching. There's a baptistry up there as well, and. And we'll see, uh, that, that's the baptistry that is right there in the center of the chariot. That's Brother George Funk, who uh, began, uh, began gospel chariot ministries there in Africa and, and uh, visited with my dad and told him of the need. And, and they came up with the idea of the gospel chariots. And, um, and George said, if you, will help, if you will raise the money for these chariots, I will put them on the road and see that the preaching happens. And uh, what, a, what a wonderful thing has been going on uh, for the last 20 years or so in, in, that, in those ways. And how it has grown. And you can see that God is so good is an often uh, spoken statement by the Africans who many times, like Steve and Jeff have said, uh, sometimes our, uh, our problems pale in comparison. Uh, to these people who live every day with the attitude of God is good. Another beautiful soul being baptized into Christ. More preaching that's taking place. Here, uh, I want to just tell you a minute, this is in Namibia where I took the youth uh, about three or four years ago. And... Um, this is a uh, meeting, uh, this is a little congregation that has started not far from Win Windhoek, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Sumeb, that, uh, where, where we were, and uh, one of, uh, I went and taught uh, Bible classes, and my dad, and several others in the area, and some folks from Illinois, and one of the young men that was one of my students in Bible class, I kept telling dad, and and uh, the, uh, the other workers, and Dimpo, and, and um, this young man really is a leader. This young man really uh, is digging into the Scriptures and studying, and uh, he, uh, he has now become the evangelist there in Namibia, and he is already uh, doing work like this. His wife is coming with him out here every... Uh, so often, and, and uh, they are planting new little congregations around them, all around their area. And this young man that was just in the school that uh, our, some of our young people might recognize, his name was John, uh, but he, uh, he is now preaching and is already uh, starting to plant little groups like this around the surrounding area of where he lives. And you can see the life-changing power of the gospel in these on these Christians who really live uh, what they are learning. 
I want to tell you that the trucks are back on the road, but I also want to tell you, and I'm almost finished, the, um, the um, gospel chariot has used its time well during the pandemic, you know, for about a year. Uh, in South Africa, Namibia, and just like, like Mexico and other places, they have really struggled, and I think in some places they're doing a little better now, some they're not. I know some of their folks in India uh, you know, are still really struggling as well. But they have uh, started uh, during the pandemic when they couldn't, when the chariots couldn't roll, they started Gospel Share, a little program here. And this is what Jeff talked about. And uh, a little bit about what Mike Holm talked about this morning. Uh, but a little discipleship training uh, that they give how to enter an empty field and evangelize, to sow the seed, and to, uh, how to share the gospel. Um, and, and part of the training is teaching them a little study that they can use that is simple but effective in sharing the gospel message. How to make disciples and to be disciples. How to gather a Bible study group in your community that will multiply. How to develop and multiply local leaders, which is a lot of what the chariot goes around and helps to do. But... Uh, in a year that has been so disappointing with COVID, I think that Gospel Chariot really thinks that in the last couple of years, maybe they've had their best couple of years. And uh, through some of this, and they have started meeting uh, the leaders, and you'd be surprised how many people in Africa and India and other places can be on the internet. Uh, it has surprised me, but... You see them working on the internet and, and you know, drawing and illustrating and showing how they share the gospel with each other uh, by studying the word and, and, and illustrating truth to each other. And uh, you can see them working. You can see my dad um, teaching uh, some of the workers who are being trained. And I don't know if you noticed, but our conference room has been booked over the last month. Uh, sometimes because we've had folks in America who are seeing what's going on with Gospel Chariot and their ministry is saying, will you teach us how to do this? And people have been driving in out of town to our building here and having little seminars in the library with my dad, churches from Texas and other places that are saying, we see the success that's going on all over the globe and we want to be a part of this. Um, and so... Um, uh, Church from Longview, Texas, just sent a bunch of their workers and and one of, and a minister with them uh, recently to do that. Uh, and uh, Jeff showed a picture of the camp. Several of our teens are there, and several of our parents were there. And uh, Jeff didn't mention how good the food was, but uh, we had uh, all kinds of incredible um, uh, cooking. Uh, from from cultures and and it, it just was a wonderful experience but the the spiritual food uh, was wonderful there and to see our kids I don't know if you've noticed but on Wednesday nights and some even on Sundays we're starting to see our young people bringing their friends and and to our small group that we've started on Sunday night and and uh, and uh, some of our kids have been going and talking to their friends and and neighbors about uh, and using some of their four fields training and trying to start spiritual conversations with people. And it's very encouraging. And that was at Camp Aragapas, uh, close by to us, around the Conway area, right? And, uh, and so, but you can see all of this work and training that's going on. And then they are going out and they are sharing and, and they are starting Zoom groups with their friends and having uh, weekly Bible studies and they're having a lot of conversions. Uh, the truck and the Gospel Share ministry have kind of really launched hard into to Togo. Um, and, uh, uh, and I believe the truck from, uh, 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 truck from the neighboring country just went into Togo. But this is in the last month. They have gone in with, with all, they have trained, they have pre trained all these workers with Gospel Share on the internet together. And they have gone, and the truck has rolled in, and they have started Zoom groups. And, and in the last couple of months, more than 2,000 people have been baptized uh, just there in Togo. 
And that number is much larger now than when these slides were made. And um, uh, this is a new congregation that has just started within the last couple of months in Mozambique. And uh, isn't that encouraging to see? This is a, these are brand new Christians. Uh, uh, we're talking the last couple of months. That you see this little congregation that is meeting and they send workers by to check on them and to train them and what a wonderful thing. And uh, you can see uh, through these uh, Zoom groups and all over India and uh, they wanted uh, the goal for this past year for Gospel Chariot was to reach out to 10 new countries that they weren't in and they've ended up through all of their, their uh, internet work and their training and their Gospel Share uh, that they have really active things going on with 24, play, 24 uh, new countries this year. So what a wonderful blessing it is. And, and um, I, we want you to be excited about what we're supporting because it, it, they are good works and the gospel is being shared. And, uh, and, it, and, the, uh, and they are works where they're not just seeking to baptize, but they're seeking to make disciples who will teach others and who will teach others, and who will teach others. And uh, isn't God's plan a wonderful plan? Amen. And we need to practice it here, and we need to be encouraged and challenged by these Christians. Thank you for being here tonight. And I want to lead us in, in one song as we stand, and I want to tell you that the uh, Lord's Supper's been left prepared. If you were, Is there anyone who would need to partake of that tonight? If you'd raise your hand, I could see. Okay. If, if so, you can go to the foyer. But we'll, we'll sing uh, number 650, and we will close. It is time to go. And we have had a... Uh, I hope you've been encouraged by... I was so encouraged by seeing the work in Mexico and Cuba and Geyer Springs tonight and the chariot. And, and uh, I hope this church keeps its enthusiasm about missions. It, it, I do believe, and I agree with Steve, that's one of the most beautiful things about this church. And, uh, and uh, thank you for blessing us tonight um, with, with all of these great reports. Let's sing number 650. If you need to partake of the Lord's Supper, please. I move to the foyer and then we'll close in prayer. There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless way. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rest, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. wonderful Lord's Day with uh, our family in Christ. And, and Lord, we thank You for Your presence. We thank You for the opportunity to worship You and to emphasize the Gospel of Your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, please bless our workers who are in the field in these many different places. Lord, we admire their courage and their zeal and their their strength and their bravery and, and uh, their love. And Lord, we pray that they won't get weary, but that they will find strength and happiness and joy in, in, in their work and in, in the service of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that You would send help their way. Lord, I pray that we would be uh, of great help to all those who we have the opportunity in sharing the gospel and in equipping and caring and supporting. Thank you for the generosity of this church. Lord, we know that many of our congregation are on the road to Texas uh, this evening um, to be able to participate in the Gibbs Memorial Service and we pray for safety and for encouragement and comfort in those ways. Lord, thank you for those who are recovering from surgeries and dealing with sickness. 
Lord, we just ask for your, for your help and your protection and your, your, uh, your great love and, and blessing. And Father, we thank you for Jesus who we live for and who we find our joy. And Father, please let um, the power of your gospel work and act 